and Rwanda and DRC trade fair six to boost trade cooperation. Hello and welcome to our Disney Hour. I am Daniel Kasahun with the news. EU initiates a resolution to undertake a second investigation of human rights abuse in Tigray is known other than a politically motivated acts. The office of the Prime Minister has briefed foreign media outlets yesterday. Satamrat reports. On her briefing, Press Secretariat of the Prime Minister's Office, Blaine Seyum, said the EU initiated resolution to undertake a second investigation of human rights abuse in Ethiopia's Tigray region is a politically motivated act. It's also aimed at abusing the international community's resource. The Ethiopian government acknowledges that the resolution is a politically motivated instrument that is set to discredit efforts undertaken uh, prior and recommendations that had been put forth already by the joint uh, UN Human Rights Office and the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission in their investigation report. Nevertheless, uh, the Prime Minister as well as the federal government took it upon them to uh, rally behind this report and endorsed uh, some of the findings and made sure that a remedial process uh, was launched. This remedial process um, entailed an interministerial task force to be uh, formed that is currently looking into the implementation aspect of it. So while these processes are already, are already in play, it doesn't um, make any sense to rally behind new investigations that are looking into the same period as the recent investigation uh, simply uh, because some did not get the results that they had anticipated. We do recall that the previous report outright rejected these accusations and allegations of a genocide having taken place. Uh, the utilization of uh, famine or uh, starvation as a weapon of war was something that was found inconclusive in the previous report. So because this is not something that had settled well with some bodies to uh, reinitiate a similar process in essence is abusing um, international norms and resources to undertake a redundant uh, activity. Asked about TPLF report is which followed its recent defeats and huge human and material losses, Blaine had this to say. On the TPLF uh, retreat, I guess uh, those um, in the international community and media who choose to amplify um, TPLF's narrative have got their own uh, agenda for doing so. Nevertheless, um, I think there is an open invitation for those that want to go and document, particularly from the international media, as has been facilitated in many parts of uh, uh, liberated areas, to go document and uh, discuss with those um, you know, that have witnessed the intense uh, battles um, what had transpired as well. So I wouldn't just leave it to a statement uh, that has been issued by an organization deemed a terrorist organization. Um, I think Ethiopia and its heroic forces do not need external validation as Ethiopians know the sacrifices uh, that have been paid and um, uh, the challenges that had been countered in order to uh, gain the current status quo as well as the setbacks that TPLF has encountered. But more importantly, I think in that argument, the TPLF will have to face and respond uh, to mothers within the Tigray region who have sent off uh, their sons and daughters thinking that they would come back. Ethiopia is optimistic that a proclamation for inclusive national dialogue will open a new phase in its democratization history. Yesterday, the Legal Justice and Democracy Affairs Standing Committee of the House of People's Representatives uh, undertook a consultation with various uh, stakeholders to garner inputs to the draft proclamation. Um, and some of the main uh, duties of this body, as has been um, uh, underlined or shared within the proclamation, is identifying agenda items that would contribute to national consensus. Um, identifying stakeholders that would need to participate in this national dialogue, uh, convening the dialogue platforms themselves, crafting implementation processes for recommendations coming out of the national dialogue, and then follow up on implementation uh, plans. Um, the draft proclamation is expected to pass in the coming weeks, and um, uh, this will uh, inevitably open up another phase in Ethiopia's democratization process anchored in inclusivity. Tremendous destruction and looting of public and private properties marked the areas previously occupied by the terrorist TPLF. It was learned. <coughs> The attacks orchestrated by the terrorist TPLF on the various economic infrastructures, public and private institutions, are not a mere act of the gangster. They are rather part of a deliberate aim to weaken the overall capabilities of the nation. The Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs, Demuka McConnell, made this remark following his visit to infrastructures destroyed and looted by the terrorist TPLF 
in dozen Cobalt chat towns of the Amhara region. Hotels, universities, hospitals, and factories are among the vandalized and looted properties in dozen Cobalt chat towns that the Deputy Prime Minister has visited. Of the war on the terrorist TPLF enters in its decisive chapter. WTO and Gabriel Mikhail, the leader of the group, has written a letter to the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres, which was circulated on social media on Monday. And it's, uh, uh, the chairman's made it look like the TPLF has accepted a call for ceasefire and that it has withdrawn its forces to that end. But questions loom large about the intent of the TPLF and how this sudden gesture of peace should be treated. The following report has shared slides uh, on it. Take a look. Tigray is an integral part of Ethiopia by the terrorist group. TPLF chairman the Brazilian governor Mikhail seems to call the march of Ethiopian forces to the region as occupation. After losing a fortified military stronghold in the areas whose objective was said to be to cut the supply route to Djibouti and hold Ethiopia in a chalk position, losing battle became pervasive in the areas it controlled. In a less than two weeks, TPLF was forced to leave cities after cities in the western, eastern and world of front in the same term. The last retreat came early this week after losing a battle in Gashana and Lalibela. In a letter to the United Nations, the great general Antonio Guterres, leader of the previously invading Tigray forces, says, as fighters outside of the region have been ordered to withdraw and return to to the embattled federal state. He actually proposed an immediate ceasefire to be followed by negotiations. Other proposals and later include the establishment of a no-fly zone for over to cry to prevent what the Brazilian dubbed hostile flights. The Ethiopian constitution does not allow regional states to deal with the international community on the own. So the question of who the TPLF thinks is coming. It actually read that the not race mouse piece of the TPLF confirmed on Monday that the withdrawal was complete. He went to the extent of accusing the international community of dragging Earth's feet over putting enough pressure on Ethiopia. When Zadkan Gavritansai appeared on Tigray television for one interview right after the TPLF force took control of the sea and Kombolcha, he said the war is over. He spoke as if the government was collapsing and that there is no entity to negotiate with. Uh, I am personally wondering if there should be any talk of dialogue at this time. What dialogue are they talking about? The war is over now. Who is the TPLF negotiating with? Because there is no entity from now onwards. The TPLF does not have a history of advocacy for peace. Shivanism and military adventurism are the things that it is known for. There had been initiatives for peace in Ethiopia, both before and after the war broke out in November 2020. The TPLF leaders, as expressed through the spokesperson Geta Chorada, touted the call for ceasefire a sick joke. But we know, as the saying goes, it takes two to tango, and Abiy Ahmed has been adamant that the only solution to this problem is military one. And the military solution is, has proved absolutely elusive. Uh, and there is no chance, no chance whatsoever that Abiy can ever achieve his ambitions militarily. And as, as we speak, our forces are beating Abiy's forces black and blue. And uh, there is no chance whatsoever that they could survive. The Brazilians later may be an attempt to avert the Ethiopian army's advance towards Megalim in an apparent attempt to destroy the TPLF once and for all. It was after that the TPLF forces took control of extensive areas 
and they are found on higher regions of Ethiopia, leading to a humanitarian crisis that affected more than 9 million people. Over 1.4 million people were displaced. Tifilif massacred thousands of civilians in both regions and unleashed the destruction of private and public properties. The destruction to Wollo University alone, as disclosed by the university, is estimated to be about 10 billion Ethiopian bomb. The Ethiopian Airlines has remained the winner of the Best African Airline Award from Skytrax, which many describe it is as the Oscar of the aviation industry. For four years in a row, Ethiopian has remained the winner of the Best African Airline Award from Skytrax, according to the airliner. The airliner said in a statement it will keep serving with the a signature, hospitality, and earn a vote of confidence as always. South African and Kenyan airlines came second and very closely trailing behind the Ethiopian airlines. It should be recalled that Ethiopian was targeted by the CNN for defamation. About 15% of the articles by the CNN during the Tigray war were engaged in vilifying Ethiopian airlines. The CNN came out with a vicious lie that Ethiopian has transported weapons to Tigray while it had nothing whatsoever to verify the report to Swiss. The Ethiopian Airlines is the fastest growing airlines in Africa. So uh, having the, um, the diaspora... The Ethiopia has been uh, imaged differently from the reality. Out of U.S. policy change towards... Uh... The real reason they, they wanted to maintain the blockade is that they wanted to... to uh... And also some pressure is on the Ethiopian government and they are just taking the domestic issue to the international arenas like the UN and... Uh... What, what, what's the picture you have about the Ethiopian diaspora? Nowadays it seems that uh, their beauty is blossoming. That the suspension of Ethiopia from Goa isn't likely to have serious impact. You're watching a business hour. Scholars say some Western forces are lobbying for the relocation of conferences destined to be the African capital Addis Ababa because of Ethiopia's resistance to foreign meddling in its internal matters. Part of the solution to the issue, they say, the Africans need to stand together as true children of Adwa and with the spirit of Pan-Africanism. Jerusalem has reports. In the past two decades, Ethiopia has built a stage when the two superpowers competing in the Horn of Africa. Particularly, the U.S. has been putting its pressure on Ethiopia's internal matter in different regimes, including in the TPLF regime. This has caused Ethiopia much, historians said. We know how we paid uh, during the last 27 years. And the policies, uh, you know, they, they give you aid, they interfere, you, interfere in the affairs of your state. They say SAP, structural adjustment program, make this, make that, change this policy and the like. Those policies do have their own negative impacts on each and every citizen of the nation. Uh, therefore, we uh, tested, uh, uh, you know, uh, that severe operation during the last 27 years. But now when the Ethiopian government begins to resist their interference, they have been trying to put their pressure against Ethiopia in different ways. Currently, some corners are lobbying for relocating conference destined to be held in Addis Ababa, which is a good testimony for that. Talking to ETV, scholars said that this is the U.S. and its lies intention against Ethiopia to diminish its political and economic power. They try to uh, put Ethiopia, it's, it's an attempt to put Ethiopia in quagmire. That means, you know, uh, if there are diplomatic offices, international organizations here, uh, it is beneficial to Ethiopia, to its economy, to its influence, uh, to different activities, um, you know, 
many foreign investors come, you see, contribute to the development of the country, uh, shifting the offices of um, uh, this uh, international diplomatic offices would mean is to paralyze the economy of Ethiopia and then to make Ethiopia poor because Ethiopia resisted uh, foreign uh, influence, foreign interventions in the affairs of our nations. The issue of uh, moving uh, Africa Union headquarters uh, can be, for them, from their perspective, can be uh, an instrument to disempower Ethiopia, uh, not only economically, but also politically and socially. Uh, Ethiopia, because of historical reason, is seen by African brothers and the sisters as a role model, as a sign of uh, resilience, sovereignty, and the freedom. The heart of the Ethiopian capital, Addis Ababa, also known as the capital city of Africa, due to its historical, diplomatic, and political significance for the continent. That's why the African Union headquarters, the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, and other international institutions choose Addis, the scholar said. Why Ethiopia, the only independent black country in the world, never colonized? That's the reason why when the Organization of African Unity way back in May 1963 was established, that's where, that's where unanimously African brothers and sisters said, Ethiopia is the rightful place to hold that. Second, why? Because of Ethiopia's contributions in the fight against neocolonialism and neocolonialism, and Ethiopia's active, active role in Pan-Africanism. Uh, third, it's a peaceful country, literally. Addis, compared to other cities, is very peaceful. Solidarity among Africans as one with the spread of Pan-Africanism is significant to withstand such kind of Western power's interest on Africa. We have to uh, revive uh, the spirit of uh, Pan-Africanism. And uh, I think, uh, fortunately, uh, Ethiopians in the country, in the, in the diaspora, uh, are already active in this uh, regard. We know the No More Movement uh, started with Ethiopians, supported with Eritreans, now supported by all Africans and even Asians and so on. We need to work on that. And then that will help us uh, to, make sure, to make sure that they will not succeed. Uh, this is a clear sign of uh, uh, American negative attitude uh, towards our nation because uh, we resisted as, as um, the children of Adoham. We, we, we should do that also, of course. We should resist foreign imposition, foreign influence in our internal affair. Africans should stood uh, firmly uh, beside Ethiopia, by the side of Ethiopia, because uh, the Western power see Ethiopia as uh, a symbol. I don't think so. They will succeed. The majority of Africans, uh, it's their right to, to float this wrong idea. But when it comes to decision, it has to be decided in you know, protocol-wise. All members should gather together and decide that will not happen. This is regarding African unity. Regarding United Nations specialized agencies, anything goes. You know, the United Nations is being put under pressure now. You know, uh, Ethiopia is also under the pressure now. I wouldn't, uh, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if some agencies of the UN report back negatively and if they want to close. It's their choice. It's their choice. I don't think... Uh, they will do it. Addis Ababa, which is called New Flower in Amharic language, is preparing to receive and to provide standard service for the coming one million Ethiopians in the diaspora and Ethiopian friends to celebrate Christmas with other Ethiopian cities and towns. You're watching at this news hour. Ethiopia is eyeing at inclusive dialogue to solve some of its internal issues, says. Set Minister of Foreign Affairs Redon Hussein. In an exclusive interview with the Nadulu Agency, the State Minister disclosed that Ethiopia will ensure inclusivity of all agendas at stake, including controversial constitutional elements to be discussed in planned national dialogue 
for a lasting solution to the internal issues. Uh, Johannes Fentown has produced the following story. Take a look. On the sidelines of the Turkey-African Partnership Summit, State Minister Redouan Hussein spent some time with an Adolu agency outlining current issues unfolding in Ethiopia. He says Ethiopia is moving forward for a broadened political landscape through a planned dialogue. He also added the dialogue is open for any reasonable discussion which may be culminated as far as the referendum. Regarding the controversies in the Ethiopian constitution that are long urged to be debated nationwide, the state minister has the following to say. Ethiopia is regaining its, its calmness and the government is now gaining all its territories and now it is opening its hands for everybody, uh, not only the government but uh, the new inclusive dialogue would, would solve um, any discord that we used to have because it will be solved in a civil manner. And then we can, we can uh, amend our constitution, we can adjust anything that all Ethiopians could see themselves as relevant uh, to participate in this uh, wider and broader process. The political space is being broadened, uh, including the constitution, all of its elements are, are, are open for discussion. And now any, if anyone has a solid, tangible, plausible, tenable reason to, to, to bring about to, to the open, then it is free uh, to participate in the discussion. And finally, it might be culminated in the referendum. Stressing the blatant rejection of reconciliation efforts by the government, he said the TPLF made it hard on itself to bring a civil solution. Despite a major propaganda campaign the terrorist group is still propagating, Ethiopian forces have pushed the rebel group out of the places which it invaded. Ethiopians are also showing strong solidarity against explicit interferences in the country's internal affairs, he said. Uh, we are complaining to a number of partners, particularly some countries from the West and most of their medias uh, are actually supporting this rebel group. They, do, they, they don't seem to wish uh, this conflict to, to be over. Uh, we cannot avoid interference. There is uh, political, geopolitical interest. Um, there always had been Africa in, in, in a position of uh, being taken advantage of. Now Ethiopia has been one of them, even though it's, not been, it's, it's never been colonized, but we've been subjected to a number of sabotages and pushings and uh, interferences. Redouan has also taken the occasion to heal the century-old relations between Ethiopia and Turkey. Our interests have never been crossed. Uh, our interests would always uh, managed to go along and I think this time around so we, we can pull together and I think the prognosis is we are progressing well uh, and then uh, it will gonna continue uh, prospering in a very economic, political and all aspects. The state minister has also addressed questions regarding the Ethiopia-Sudan issues. Despite provocations, particularly from the military wing of the Sudan's transitional government, Redouan says Ethiopia has refused to respond because it believed that the conflict was instigated by an artificial issue created by external actors, which is of no use for both countries. According to him, Ethiopia and Sudan have their internal challenges to engage on besides their border issue. This small case was cooked by some external actors with vested interests of aggravating the problem in both countries.
Lidek di fiche lan no melone. This is a dismiss hour. Residents of Raya Kobo town in the Amhara regional state uh, said the TP terrorist group has massacred more than 120 civilians in the town. In addition to massacring civilians in various parts of the Amhara and Afar, the TPLF has carried out extensive looting and destruction of properties during its occupation of areas in the region. The residents also told the Ethiopian news agency the terrorist group brutally massacred innocent people in Rayokwapo town and raped several women, including pregnant. Eyewitnesses also said that the group had committed atrocities on residents of the town that should not have happened on human beings, demonstrating it is barbaric cruelty by massacring more than 120 civilians in Raya Kobo. The residents said they are now happy as the combined forces of the Ethiopian have wiped out the terrorist group and liberated the areas from the invaders. Ambassador and permanent representative of Ethiopia to the United Nations, Tayas Kaslasi underlined that uh, the amount of lies and excuses evade TPLF's culpability against Ethiopia. The terrorist TPLF will disarm and be held accountable to the full force of the law. The promise of peace is in reconciliation between all Ethiopians who so respect and abide by the rule of law, the ambassador added. Exposing the obvious flaws in the so-called international organizations, the United Nations has demanded yet another unfettered humanitarian access to Tigray. While doing so, the United Nations failed to condemn the TPLF-led destructions and looting on health facilities and other public institutions worth billions of dollars. We have called for a ceasefire. We call again today for unfettered humanitarian access. Ethiopia last June claimed a unilateral ceasefire to help war victims and to improve humanitarian access to the war-torn Tigray. Unfortunately, the unilateral ceasefire was denounced as a sick joke by the TPLF warmongers. The TPLF used this gesture to regroup and expand the conflict to neighboring Amhara and Afar regions. The announcement of unilateral ceasefire should be treated with the content it so richly deserves because it is so vacuous it is it means nothing u.s government is saying that another immediate urgent precondition for a ceasefire must be you withdrawing your forces from amhara and from afar regions and i want to know if you're prepared to do that we are not prepared to do that the TPLF committed a number of atrocities that claimed the lives of dozens of unarmed civilians, which included children. This waits for an immediate denunciation from the United Nations as soon as, although none has come so far. The United Nations Human Rights Council, together with the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission, conducted an investigation that can be taken as an authentic witness that younger women and also women as old as 85 were gang raped by TPLF terrorist group that might not need any further explanation to designate the belligerent group as terrorist remnants already. The man in my cadre attacked with machetes by the Samri Tigrayan youth group shot in the back and thrown into a fire. It is to be recalled that the United Nations Human Rights Council held a video conference special session on Friday to address what is called the grave human rights situation in Ethiopia. Ethiopia and all the African representatives together with the likes of China, Russia, Cuba and Turkey have rejected the proposal which was passed with a simple majority. Connecting the dots, one can see that the new wave is aimed at finding a pretext to further pressurize Ethiopia with a fake genocide.
arrived three days ago coming from Erbil, Iraq, and I had booked this uh, hotel here, Grand Royal Hotel, online before coming, and I come walking up the street here. I had uh, gotten a taxi from the airport and traffic was bad and so he dropped me off a few blocks down that way and I come walking up and I realize I recognize this square and the statue of the guy right there. Let's uh, get across the uh, street here. The Nile River is right out there. Very nice image from Cairo. And finally, business representatives from the Democratic Republic of Congo's private sector attended the Rwanda National Trade Fair for the very first time on Monday. The event presents an opportunity to the two countries not just to make sales and exhibit the next products, but also to sign a trade agreement with the Rwandan Private Sector Federation that will facilitate trade and boost business cooperation between the countries. Stakeholders in the agreement further call on the inclusion of local traders in the deal for the benefit of locals between the two countries. The agreement comes after DRC announced it would be joining the East African region, hoping to boost its exports to other countries in the region. Rwanda is also eyeing the wide market in Congo for Rwandan products. Through the trade agreement, both countries stand to benefit in the long run. All sectors in Rwanda are eyeing Congo, particularly manufacturing made in Rwanda and agriculture. There is a lot of cross-border trading that includes agricultural products across this according to the African news. In reminding you the headlines, the TPLA forces retreat to Tigray while third leaders beg for peace. Lobbying against this as conference hub comes after resistance to foreign aggression. And Rwanda and the RC Trade Fair seeks to boost trade cooperation. <laughs>